Hello students. So today we are seeing the pectoral region. So this is the pectoral region. I exposed the skin. I removed the mammary gland. So now we can see the muscles of the pectoral region. These are pectoralis major, pectoralis minor and subclavius. So first this large muscle what you are seeing this is the pectoralis major. So pectoralis major consists of two origin. So here you can see the clavicle. So this is the clavicular head and here it is the sternocostal head. So clavicular head you can see I removed the clavicular head it is arises from the anterior surface of medial two third of clavicle. Then the sternocostal head arises from the anterior surface of sternum and the costal cartilages you can see the costal cartilages second to sixth costal cartilages. Also it takes origin from the aponeurosis of external oblique abdominis muscle. Then the insertion, the fibers you can see here, it inserted to the lateral lip of bicipital groove and it forms the anterior axillary fold. You can see this is the anterior axillary fold. Okay. Now the nerve supply it is medial and lateral pectoral nerve. If I lift this one, you can see here this is the medial pectoral nerve, here it is the lateral pectoral nerve. It is supplying the muscle, you can see it clearly. Now its action, it is the flexion of the arm, adduction of the arm and the medial rotation of the arm. So this is the pectoralis major muscle. Okay. Now we can see the muscle deep to that. When I lift, we can see the another muscle here now. So that is pectoralis minor muscle. So you can see the pectoralis minor. Okay. So the pectoralis minor, it takes origin from sec third, fourth and fifth ribs. You can see the third, fourth and fifth ribs. This arises from third, fourth and fifth ribs and it is inserted deep to the coracoid process, tip of coracoid process. So this is pectoralis minor muscle. This is also supplied by medial pectoral nerve and also from the lateral pectoral nerve. Then the third muscle, it is its action it is, it helps the serratus anterior to protract the scapula. Okay. The another third muscle, it will be deeper inside here, that is the subclavius muscle. So the subclavius muscle, subclavius muscle, it takes origin from the first rib and inserted to the subclavian groove in the clavicle. And its action, it helps the, it stabilizes the clavicle there. No supply it is nerve to subclavius. So that is three muscles of the pectoral region. Now the most important structure in the pectoral region that is the fascia that is the clavipectoral fascia. So clavipectoral fascia is the fascia situated deep to the pectoralis major muscle which encloses the two muscles that is subclavius and pectoralis minor. So we can trace the pe clavipectoral fascia. First we can see the vertical tracing. Then we will see the medial and lateral. So vertical tracing if you see above it is split into two and encloses the subclavius muscle. Then it comes down. This is the clavipectoral fascia. Encloses the pectoralis minor muscle. And below it continues here as the suspensory ligament of axilla. Then it blends with the axillary fascia. So that is the vertical extension of the clavipectoral fascia. If you see medially it is attached to the first rib and it forms a costoclavicular ligament. Laterally it attached to the coracoid process and it forms a coracoclavicular ligament here. So this is about the attachment of the clavipectoral fascia. Now if you see the structure piercing the clavipectoral fascia that is one of the very important feature here usually ask us mcq or short answers even uh, in the theory okay so now we can see the structure piercing first one we can see this is the lateral pectoral nerve you can see clearly lateral pectoral nerve next to the lateral pectoral nerve you can see this one is thoracoacromian artery and here you can see the uh, cephalic vein in the delta pectoral groove it comes here and pierces the 
clavi pectoral fascia and it drains into the axillary fascia so you can see all the three structures very clear four structures clearly so lateral pectoral nerve thoracocromian artery and the cephalic vein and the few lymphatics so these are the structure piercing the clavi pectoral fascia now we will see the mammary gland so we finished with the pectoral muscles now we will see the mammary gland so which i removed the mammary gland so the mammary gland it is nothing but it is the modified sweat gland apocrine sweat gland situated in the superficial fascia of pectoral region okay over the pectoral fascia so you can see that is the extent of mammary gland if you see it is extend above from the second rib to the sixth rib and horizontally if you see the lateral border of the sternum to the mid axillary line okay so the deep structures of uh, the mammary gland if you see if you remove so you can see pectoralis major external oblique aponeurosis and here it is the serratus anterior muscles these are the deep relation above that there is a space known as retro mammary space where the mammary gland moves freely right now next it is structure of the mammary gland when you see the structure of mammary gland three features skin stroma and parenchyma this is the skin in the skin you can see a nipple that is a conical projection at the center so here it consists of a smooth muscle and also around 15 to 90 lactiferous duct opens into the skin and highly supplied by the sensory nerves here then surrounding that there is the areola that is highly pigmented region which consists of plenty of sebaceous glands here during pregnancy these sebaceous glands elevated or little enlarged to form the montgomery tubercles okay montgomery tubercles so this is the mammary skin now next it is the stroma you can see entire fat here so the stroma it is made up of the fat and the connective tissue the connective tissue forms the ligaments known as the ligament of cooper which helps in the uh, maintaining the structure of the uh, shape of the mammary gland another next feature it is the uh, parenchyma which consists of 15 to 20 lactiferous duct which is arranged in a radial manner which consists of each duct consists of lobules in lobules which consists of the acinae which opens into the duct near the nipple the duct consists of a sinus and then it opens into the nipple so that is about the uh, lactiferous duct now next we can see that that is a structure skin parent stroma and parenchyma next we can see the blood supply of the uh, mammary gland blood supply of the mammary gland that is formed by when it is the perforating branches from the internal thoracic artery here then another it is the main branches of the axillary artery these are superior thoracic thoraco acromion and the lateral thoracic arteries okay lymph venous drainage will be the same and in this and one more the blood supply it is that is the posterior intercostal arteries posterior intercostal arteries in venous drainage this posterior intercostal veins which drains into the intravertebral plexus which ultimately drains into the dural venous sinuses so that is the spread of cancer to forms the metastasis to the brain okay right? so now the lymphatic drainage comes to the lymphatic drainage that forms mainly the axillary group of lymph nodes in axillary group anterior posterior lateral apical and central in this the anterior is most draining channel for the mammary gland other than the axillary group internal mammary supraclavicular subdiaphragmatic and posterior intercostal so these are the other lymph nodes of the mammary gland so understood this is the uh mammary gland and the pectoral region